Liz Truss and the Chancellor visited a medical site under construction, their own new build government showing early structural weakness. Today, a rebellion forming against Liz Truss's plan to uprate benefits well below the rate of inflation. And amongst the rebels, a cabinet minister. I have always supported, uh, whether it's pensions, whether it's uh, our welfare system, uh, keeping pace uh, with inflation, it's, uh, it makes sense uh, to do so. Some of your colleagues going rogue, Chancellor. Hello. Do some, of your do some of your cabinet colleagues need to pipe down, Chancellor? Former ministers amongst those lining up against a below inflation rise in benefits. I think that would be the wrong thing to do. Uh, we've promised, admittedly, the, the previous administration, but another Conservative administration, has promised to increase by inflation uh, this year, so, and you should keep your promises. Um, but also, I think it's the right thing to do, particularly this winter. Um, you don't want to be uh, reducing the amount going to people who are quite poor to start with. That seems to me wholly the wrong approach. And, and I don't think many of my colleagues would either. I, th I think there would certainly be quite sizable opposition to that. Yes. She couldn't get it through. I think it would be very unlikely to get through the House of Commons. Coming after Tory MPs yesterday, forced to climb down on the top rate of tax out of the government, the Home Secretary said she sniffed a sinister plot. I understand the reasons why. Ultimately, I'm very disappointed that members of our own parliamentary party uh, staged a coup effectively and undermined the authority of the Prime Minister um, in an unprofessional way. We are one party. No, nobody is, is talking about mounting a coup. Uh, this, is, this is all about individual issues where uh, the, you know, the government needs to meet uh, its promises, keep its promises and you know, continue on a, a sensible track. Those calling for discipline, not always from the usual cast list. But what's happening at the moment is a kind of scattergun of opposition, and that clearly isn't a winning formula. So I would just appeal... You're telling the internal critics to pipe down and shut up. Well, you chose those words. You know, I'm very conscious of what I've done in the past. Toppling prime ministers, it could be up. Well, I think plural is probably going a bit far, but... Um, we're in, all of us are in politics to try and make the country a better place and improve people's lives. I'm very clear what I'm going to do, and I'm very clear that that means being disciplined and backing the Prime Minister, the Chancellor and the rest of the cabinet. Earlier I caught up with the Prime Minister and I started by asking her whether it might have helped her to announce her planned spending cuts in areas like welfare at the time of the budget. And maybe that could have reduced market turmoil that followed. Well, what we needed to do is act quickly. Because if you remember, people were facing energy bills of up to £6,000. Businesses were facing going out of business. And we had a slowing global economy and very high inflation rates. And what our package did, which is a combination of the energy price guarantee and the tax reductions, is help deal with those issues. Meaning that households weren't paying more than a typical mm. £2,500 on their energy, which was the biggest part of the package. Absolutely. And also that we were dealing with inflation because the energy package also reduced inflation by up to 5%. And, and the fact is we couldn't have done it quickly enough, Gary, in answer to your question, well, the, the energy, with the whole package. Forgive me, you're talking there about the energy price guarantee, which I saw you announce uh, before... Uh, the budget and then the, the numbers are in remember, the budget. If you remember, we had to announce the numbers in the budget and Absolutely, that was a they commitment need to be there. we gave. I don't actually want to talk about the energy price guarantee too much. There's an enormous consensus about that. That did not trigger panic in the city. I want to ask you about the optional bits you threw into that budget. Uh, you, I do want to talk about the bit where you were driving quite well on the road. I want to ask you about the crash. And it, it does seem that as though... that was the biggest that, part. The energy price guarantee yes, was but, the biggest part of but what the triggered, budget. But what triggered the problems with uh, uh, guilt and with the currency was the other, bit of the, the other bit of the package, wasn't it? Well, I have acknowledged that we should have laid the ground better for what we were doing. The fact is we didn't have a great deal of time. Well, I've you chose to do the tax cuts that day. I, I take your point. You needed to do the energy price guarantee quickly, and you've made that point very clear. But the tax cuts were something you chose to do, and the city put a giant question mark next to your judgment on that. They don't believe you have credibility. Uh, they don't believe your numbers insofar as they can see any numbers that justify how you're ever going to pay back the borrowing to do the tax cuts. We have the second lowest debt in the G7, so we're in a good position in terms of debt. And what we'll do 
in the medium well, term fiscal plan. Why did the price of debt shoot up? Is, laid, is lay out how we are going to reduce debt as a proportion of GDP over time. But, yes, but they, we were right, we were, we were right to act. That. We were right to act. I think we have to recognize the times we are in. We're in a very volatile global situation. We've seen energy prices spike as a result of Putin's war in Ukraine. We've seen currencies under pressure around the world, and we've seen interest rates rise around the world. So this is not, this is not an easy environment to operate in. We've got in. a special environment well, I here, can haven't see, we? I you, can you see know you've got that. Ten-year gilts. Mm. Look at the spike there. That's when the mini budget happens. This is, there was, you're right, there was a glide path up of interest rates globally. Absolutely mm. right. But you put it on steroids with that mini budget in this country. Well, what we've done is we've taken decisive action. What people were talking about, Gary, before, before our mini budget and before we made our energy announcement, was the very, very high energy bills families would face this winter. Yes, that's the bit of the road, and that's the bit of the driving that I didn't want you're, you're to particularly picking, talk about because frankly, that's yeah, the bit where you're, there's you're, a consensus. You're, you're, I'm asking about you're cherry the bit of your picking plan. the bit you don't well, you I, like from the bit you I don't like. I think I'm talk, I'm wanting to talk about the very controversial bit. The, the reaction on sterling and on debt was actually on what you did on tax. They didn't believe we're, your numbers. We're facing, they thought you were being reckless. We're facing three big challenges. One is energy costs, one is inflation and one is slowing global growth. And to put up taxes at a time when we had slowing global growth, I believe would have been completely wrong. So one of the changes we made in the mini budget is not raising corporation tax. Now, my view, and this is the view of the Chancellor, and it's the view that I put forward in the leadership election campaign, is putting those taxes up at this moment would be wrong. We had this uh, extraordinary incident last week when defined benefit pension funds were in grave difficulty and the Bank of England had to intervene. When you were doing your mini budget, did you have any expectation that something like that might be triggered or were you in blissful ignorance? I don't know which answer would be more reassuring. But that, issues like that of financial stability are a matter for the Bank of England. Did they fall asleep and on the job? And interest rates. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that. The, the Bank of England... Or did they not the Bank of England acted decisively. But did they but, know? But we've got to be careful about saying the, the, the Chancellor and the Bank of England talk all the time. But, so they knew what and, was And we are, we are very coordinated. But I think it's important to understand that we have an independent Bank of England that sets interest rates and deals with financial stability issues, which is different from the government's fiscal policy. And we're all operating... Mm -hmm. We're all operating, Gary, in an extremely volatile global environment. Well, it was especially volatile in this country, as you've got to acknowledge. Well, I and mean, your, I, I don't suppose you report on other, other countries, but it was the right decision to act. If we hadn't acted, people would be facing I'm very high energy bills. I'm talking we're about the tax cuts. Not, you, keep, you keep going to the bit of the road that you were driving on that everyone thinks you were driving quite well on. I'm but asking about the That was the majority the of the mini-budget was the energy support, Gary. I think you're rewriting history here. Um, well, your budget's being rewritten at the moment, so people will wonder how many other bits of your plan will actually get through. Have you asked Michael Gove whether he's happy with the rest of the growth plan? Look, on the, on the 45p rate, I listened to what people had to say. Before or after? I took the feedback. Well, this week, I listened to what people after. had to say, and we're now not proceeding, and I think that shows somebody who is prepared to listen and react to that feedback. Doesn't that mean you're not the different sort of Prime Minister that maybe some of your supporters were hoping? You, you're going to compromise. You're going to do what all those other Prime Ministers did before well, you. I, you might even preside over managed decline if you're not careful. Well, I certainly don't want to preside over managed decline, and that is what we are absolutely focused on making sure doesn't happen. But you told us the 45p rate was... Difficult critical to it all. It was, it, was quasi -quartings. it was near the climax of the speech. It was very important to incentives. It was important to growth, presumably all factored in carefully into the growth forecast of 2.5, uh, which you, the, the you've fact got. Is it, it was important, wasn't it? It had become a distraction from what we were doing and the bigger, the bigger measures across the rest of the mini-budget. It had become a distraction. 
there's a phrase that we hear goes around uh, inside number 10, now you're there presiding, and it's uh, go big or go home. Does that ring a bell? You must have heard it in meetings. I haven't heard that. Oh, it comes out of the number 10 machine quite often. You're a different type of leader, aren't you? You think we should take slightly more risks, maybe, than some of your predecessors. People should adapt to that and expect that. Is that right? What I think is that over the past few decades, we have become a high-tax country. I mean, tax rates were at a 70-year high. And I think that's a problem because ultimately that makes it harder to set up a business. It makes it harder to secure investment into our country. And you know, that leads, leads to fewer opportunities in the future. And what I want is I want a country where people invest in places like Birmingham and places like Leeds, where there are more high quality jobs or more opportunities. And I think that our very high tax burden has prevented that. So that's what I want to change. Quick last question, if I may. On benefits, uh, I know you say you haven't made a decision yet, completely understand that, on, whether, on the uprating of benefits. That's a decision still to come. But your instincts must be that if the people in private sector jobs aren't getting inflation pay rises, people on benefits shouldn't? Is that where you start? Well, we will look at this in the round with all the other issues we face. I would point out that in addition to our energy package, we provided an extra £1,200 to the most vulnerable households. Yes, I think that so was to take into account the fact they didn't get a proper rise last year. And that we're looking gone, into, you know, we, spent, we, we always, you want to set it against. we always make sure that those who are most vulnerable are supported. But... A decision like, like that, that a, decision, a decision like that, we will look into, we will look in at the round. Thank you, Prime Thank Minister. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.